Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, uh, coming at you with another quick mobile episode of Blazing Heat, uh, which is a new uh, extension of The Black Voice. Uh, if you want to know more about it, check out uh, the previous uh, installment. Uh, we talk about Kelly Price, which should be the video right before this one. Uh, and it will explain a lot. And I'll talk more about it as we develop it. But uh, the first episode was that one, and this is the second episode of Blazing Heat, which is bought is it, which is brought to you by Inbox Dollars and Living Green uh, Supreme Foods. Uh, the link for those are in the description box. Check it out if you're looking to make some extra money. Uh, you know, whatever it is, uh, this is not a get rich quick scan. You're not going to get rich doing it, but it definitely can help supplement some in income. Check out Inbox Dollars. Inbox Dollars uh, is a way to earn money by taking surveys, opening emails, surfing the web. Uh, check that out. Living Green Supreme Foods is about supplementing your daily nutritional need for green uh, vegetables and all of the benefits of it check that out as well uh, look I'm not gonna be too long it's a lot going on some things I'm trying to get done uh, but the news just dropped down a couple of hours ago uh, R Kelly was found guilty of several counts of racketeering uh, sex trafficking uh, and a number of other charges that violate the anti-sex trafficking laws that are currently on the books um, some of them were named specifically uh, exploiting, sexually exploiting a child and some other stuff was on there. Um, number one is, I've never been one to defend aberrant behavior, uh, no matter who the person is. Uh, I'm also not one to go out and try to destroy somebody because of who they are. I call the spade a spade and I say what's going on. I am never going to be and never will stand for the victimization of our women and our children. Uh, I don't give a shit who does it. Uh, but this isn't about attacking R. Kelly because to be too, too totally uh, truthful about that, you know, I've literally sired a couple of mine off of this guy's music. Uh, musically, he's a genius, but that doesn't exempt him uh, from the behavior. Uh, there are a lot of people that still thought he would get off. Uh, and there are still some people who are going to defend him. And I'm not here to make the argument. Uh, you know, number one is I know the whole scheme and, and, and plot of everything. I know that just because the system gets you doesn't mean that you necessarily did it. But I also know that this has been an ongoing issue with this guy. And that's been constant, constant, constant um, uh, evidence and people coming forth. And people come forth for a lot of different reasons. Do I think everybody that came forth was actually exploited by him? No. Do I think the brother has an absolute uh, problem uh, that nobody called him on ever? Absolutely. Uh, do I think he was uh, empowered and uh, to, to do it by the people around him? Yes. Not only was there a silent condemnation, which is what happens when you don't say anything about something, you give your condemnation. You condone it by not saying nothing. It's called silent condemnation. Not only was there silent condemnation, there was some co-signing going on. You know, some of the stuff. And it was a reflection of a lot of the shit that we, excuse me, this is just where I'm at right now. A lot of the shit that we see in the hood where you got old cats talking about how fine some little girl's going to be when she's growing up. Well, how in the hell are you looking at her and visualizing that? That's some sideways stuff that we've seen growing up. So I'm talking about, I'm 54, and I heard old cats doing that. I seen old cats sitting by the tree playing dominoes, uh, hollering at the little girls, 13, 14, 15, walking by. Uh, I see it perpetuated in movies. Um, one movie that it just, for whatever reason, sticks out to me is that Tyler Perry movie, uh, Mudia's Family Reunion, where those little girls walking around, them old men got them digging in. Uh, the barrel for for beer and soda for them so they can watch them all this stuff like this is a reflection of some issues that we have been needing to deal with again uh, i'm not here to destroy the bro i hope that some kind of way he finds help i hope that some kind of way they don't take his entire life away from him but at the same time it's not up for me to defend that 
what I want to talk about is how it, it went for so long unchecked and even when he was outed the people who could have sit up and said okay man it's time for to step up you see after a while when you've been complicit to us for so long your conscience starts to tie you to it and then you can't sit up and call them on it because you've been there and no telling how many people participated and again this isn't me deflecting what he did by pointing to someone else this is me saying it shouldn't stop there this this definitely shouldn't stop there far too many people from those with the record label for those who were in his camp from his business manager uh you know i mean his bodyguard i mean the thing is there were people that were aware of what he was doing outside of the people who were sounding the alarm that sit up for years and said, no, he wasn't doing it, that all of a sudden now are sitting up saying, well, yeah, this happened, that happened, and whatever. All of those need to be held accountable because you lied. You could have saved people. You could have helped people. You could have changed things. The thing is, I, I, I you know, like another reason that I don't want to completely toss this dude away and throw him away is because he was failed. He was failed. This happened to him when he was a little kid by his own sister. No telling what else happened that hasn't come out. But that definitely came out. That's definitely an issue. That was definitely never dealt with. Whatever that created, and however it contributed to his own sexual deviancy, it needs to, you know, it, that needs to be acknowledged. Now, here's the big part. And this is what I tell all the people I work with who have gone through some unbelievable tra tra traumatic things in their life. That was messed up. What you went through was messed up. But guess what? Life don't care. So you got a choice. You can continue to live in the dysfunction and the frustration and the bitterness and the screwed up ways that you develop because of what you went through. Or you can decide that you're going to change your life and you're going to do something about it. And it's going to be hard work. It's going to be painful. It's going to be a bunch of things that are going to happen. But at, 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 the, at the end of the day, you're going to be responsible for your life no matter how screwed up somebody else made it. And so those are the things but my thing that really got me to jump on here and talk about this so quickly is he's the center point he's the focal point he's the guy with the big name um you know that everybody recognizes that is you know at the center of this but there's an entire culture that facilitated it there's an entire culture that co-signed it. There's an entire culture that sit up and did absolutely nothing to help the people who were victims in this. There were parents who were complicit in it. They, they, they're, they're, they're talking now. They're, they, they're speaking up now. But you were complicit in it. You knew who he was when you let your daughter go with him. You knew he was an adult man when you let your teenage daughter go with him. Even if you didn't know what he was capable of, why would you let your teenage daughter go with an adult man? Again, this isn't taken from the f foolish, crazy stuff that he did. It's saying that everybody needs to be held accountable. You can't push somebody off somewhere and something happened to them and then you point to the person that did it. You shouldn't have pushed them off there in the first place. Those are the things that nobody wants to talk about. We're so freaking screwed up that there's something inside of us that thinks it's okay to let a 15, 16 year old girl go with a 30 something year old man and just hope that, you know, there's no condition or situation under the sun where my child is going off with some entertainer that's an adult and they're a child. Absolutely not. There's absolutely none. Even if my child is an aspiring singer and extremely gifted, and I have a few, I'm going to be there in the studio. I'm going to be there at every situation. I'm going to be there. Why? It's my job to protect them. And that's the thing that really bothers me about this is it wasn't just dude it was an entire culture and system that failed these people uh many of whom are adults now and you know that like i said there's some who are going to say he got railroaded you know when it first went down i never watched the video that started all this i never watched it um number one is to me that's child pornography if there's a child involved and there's a sexual act going on that's child pornography and i'm not going to watch it so i never saw the tape so i had to go off of what everybody else was talking about so you know 
some saying that they proved that wasn't him. Others are saying that it's absolutely him and it's whatever. Okay, you know, so I was willing to sit up and say, okay, if it was really him, they'd have got him. You know, if they could prove that that was him and that the person that he was with was actually underage, if they can verify both of those things, then they got him. That never happened. So I said, okay, maybe that's just bull crap with somebody that's throwing out there because they, they don't like what happened went down or they, you know, they hot about something. Okay, then here come the next story. Here come the next story. Here come the next story. After a while, this becomes a pattern. You know, over a, a, an, a, 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 an extremely long period of time. This wasn't a flash in the pan where everybody jumps on. That's its ongoing theme. Its ongoing theme. And my thing is, how many times were there, was there an opportunity to put an end to it and nobody took action? You know, except the powerless, those who can sit up and yell to the top of their lungs. And then here comes a whole herd of people who's telling them they're just trying to get over. They're just trying to win. You, you know, you, you're just going after the dollars, blah, blah, blah. And they're quieted by the masses. My thing is, there's no such thing to me as a celebrity in the sense of human behavior. You, celebrities aren't exempted from hardship. Celebrities aren't exempted from divorce. Celebrities aren't exempted from all types of illness, including pedophilia and ephebophilia. Uh, and for those of you who don't know the difference, pedophilia are those who are attracted to prepubescent children, children who haven't developed sexually. And ephebophilia is uh, the attraction to uh, underaged minors who are uh, post pubescent, meaning that they've actually developed sexually, but they're still minors. So basically teenagers. Okay. Regardless, that's a condition. It's an illness. They are trying their best to normalize that crap. And so this, this is the world we're in. My thing is we didn't stand up and I say we because I really do identify with my people even though I never had any connectivity a connection to it but you know I've tried to speak as straight and direct on it as I possibly can um, again this started when and before he was failed and you know it, it just continued on it perpetuated itself uh, so he could literally be sentenced to life and nobody, you know, we don't know what it's going to end up being at this particular point. Uh, but it's definitely going to be something that more than likely going to uh, attempt to make a, a an example out of him. So it's probably not going to be pretty for him. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, there's a cost and a price to pay. Now, if for some reason I'm wrong, and this is just the most horrible failure possible. And he didn't do any of it. Then I am more than sorry. And I will have no problem if it ever comes out uh, professing that. And, you know, you know me. I have no problem printing retractions, uh, video carding retractions, and saying when I was wrong with something. This isn't about me. Uh, doubling down on something about this guy because like I said I, I was a fan of the guy and I'm not a fan of many but I love genius like I said and I said this before uh when I was talking about Kelly Price which is also in the music, music industry I grew up in that industry I also for a while was in business in that industry and I know what that that industry is like it will chew you up and it will spit you out but it also gives you an appreciation for true talent that's why I literally die listening to hip-hop these days but anyway with all that being said you know i just wanted to kind of get on and talk about that because everybody's uh the next week or so until he's sentenced everybody's going to be talking about r kelly uh i'm talking about everybody else because without everybody else r kelly doesn't get 30 years into it before he's finally uh shut down you know and so that's what we need to actually be looking at is how that happened and what kind of culture are we residing in that it did happen. And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.